a short break. Uh, you might have noticed that I'm not Robert anymore. Um, my name is David, uh, just in case uh, you haven't seen the introductory session yesterday. Um, uh, I did the very first session and then uh, took a quick nap, uh, about four hours to, yeah, to get up to speed again. And now here I am, uh, I'm going to um, uh, moderate you through the thing that's afternoon here in Germany and something else probably in your local time zone. Um, before we jump into our next presentation, just uh, small notes in case you just joined. Um, first of all, um, because I think we haven't mentioned that so far, um, we are very happy to have a sponsor for this uh, edition of Jane Beyond Online, this very special thing. <laughs> Robert just realized that we forgot that. Um, thank you, Plesk, for, for helping us out. Um, that's been a great help, great pleasure working with you guys. Um, if you're maintaining a server, uh, take a look at uh, Plesk and especially Juma Toolkit. Awesome sauce. Thank you, Plesk. Um, next thing, uh, shameless self-promotion, um, as we had to cancel the in-person edition of Jane Beyond in Lisbon this year for uh, rather obvious coronavirus-related reasons, um, we would really, really appreciate any help um, financially. Um, so uh, if you have uh, a couple of bucks flying around uh, right now, um, or oh, just fire up janebeyond.org, hit the donate button. Um, it would be well appreciated and would really help us uh, getting another edition of Jane Beyond in person set up for next year. Um, if you're doing some some buzz on social media, um, sharing your thoughts about sessions or just sharing a photo of your coffee, uh, please don't forget the Jeb20 hashtag. And um, a very personal thing, uh, I would love to see you guys posting selfies watching the stream. Um, we'll probably do some sort of slideshow thingy with all of you people uh, watching us uh, to, to, yeah, to also share how the other people are looking the stream and uh, give you that feeling of being one big group. So uh, yeah, don't forget that selfie. Okay, I think that's it from the organization perspective. And now we're jumping into Joomla and Angular. Uh, together with Ashwin, um, I'm really curious uh, because I I fell fell in love with JavaScript uh, like two years ago, and I'm actually enjoying it. So uh, Ashwin, the stage is yours. Uh, amaze me. All right, thanks, David, and hi everybody. Uh, yeah, it feels it feels a little odd to be speaking into my own room without any audience in front of me. <laughs> so I'm gonna try do my best. So hello. So. Yeah, so we're talking about uh, Joomla plus Angular and uh, how it's going to take you into the next decade of development. Why did I say next decade? Uh, we'll come to that in a few slides. So before that, a uh, quick introduction. So I'm Ashwin, uh, co-founder of Tech Joomla and Tech Technologies. Uh, I'm one of the lead uh, technology guys out there. Uh, so as Tech Joomla, we started out in 2009 as extension as an extension shop to start with, but then we moved on into a lot of uh, custom software development, and we have a team of over 50 uh, developers, designers, and architects uh, so far. Uh, TechD has been a, a parent company of Tech Joomla, uh, founded in 2006. It's been open source focused, uh, and that's been kind of our growth strategy to get a big customer base across the world. We are also India's uh, largest company that works on Joomla, and we've done uh, uh, a lot of complex projects. The, re the most recent one has been uh, building the Joomla-based website for India's uh, uh, identity program, UIDEI. And then uh, the overall thought process when building projects is a product-first approach. And then uh, with this product-first approach is what we've been able to create a lot of open source products, uh, API being one of them. And uh, that's what I'll be talking about uh, in, a, in, in, a, in a good detail in this session. So that's our team, a quick photo, and uh, some stuff that we do, UI, UX, web and portal, APIs, big data analytics, modern front ends, uh, large Joomla applications, mobile apps, progressive apps. So that's us. So yeah, so some of our products, so as you might have 
all of you might know at Joomla, we do uh, some good products out there. Uh, Shika has been one of our most successful LMS products. Then we have Jerry Kitting, which lets you do uh, paid events, online events. Also, it lets you integrate with uh, Zoom, Adobe Connect for online events. Then we have JGIV, which is like a Kickstarter. You can create your own Kickstarter site uh, using JGIV. It also lets you do uh, micro donations apart from uh... and then there's a bunch of open source products so apis so again i mean uh, i know a lot has been happening in the api end on in joomla but then uh, we've been working on com api for uh, several years now it lets you very easily hook on a uh, api toolkit on joomla 3.x and uh, you can write plugins to create additional API endpoints. We have TJ reports, which is an extension that lets you create uh, uh, it lets you create reports for your extensions, and uh, it does CSV export. It lets you uh, reorder columns, hide columns, all the good stuff that you would want in a reporting extension. Uh, we have UCM, which is a, a CCK. We have TJ dashboard, which lets us create a dashboard in Joomla. And then we have an advanced search extension that lets you index data from any extension uh, into Algolia or Solar or Elastic. Uh, we have TJ notifications, which lets you templatize all of your uh, notifications and also works with uh, SMS uh, push apart from just email. And uh, TJQ is a very recent addition. So uh, in a few places, we felt the need of creating a job queue integration with Amazon SQS or MySQL. So TJQ is essentially a, a queuing extension for Joomla. And then let's just jump right in into the topic. So yeah, so I talked about a modern front end or a angular front end. So why why do we need another front end? Uh, of course, Joomla has a great front end. There's plenty of template providers out there. So why do we need another one? So uh, so the so the web. As of today is going into uh, something that we call as a multi-tier architecture. So there's different names to it. Uh, you, you must have heard microservices, you must have heard decoupled architecture. Essentially what it does is that uh, there's, three, there's three key things. There's a front-end layer, there's a business logic, and then there's a database. So all these three are decoupled so that they can be independently evolved. We can have different teams working on them. They can as well be different technologies. So we've also seen cases where the Angular front end talks to not just a Joomla backend, but there's services like Algolia or even services that are built on other uh, platforms like maybe Python or Node.js. <clears throat> so that's uh, so that's the architecture. And then with this architecture, uh, it's also easier to deploy, to manage, to scale. So you might you might see that uh, one of your few of your APIs uh, have a lot of traffic. You can actually move them out to a separate, uh, uh, separate instance and scale that instance independently without kind of uh, unnecessarily scaling other parts of your application. So uh, a typical three-tier architecture is where we have a JavaScript front end, which could be Angular, React, even Vue.js. You have application layer, which is PHP, Python, Node.js, or even a combination of all of that, and you have a database. So uh, this is this is what a lot of people seem to be going forward with, and then uh, V2 V2 had uh, opportunity to do this. I'll actually go over a couple of <clears throat> uh, case studies later in my presentation. So, uh, why do we do this with Joomla? So, obviously, you could use Laravel, you could use J Python, Django. Why Joomla? Uh, a a great, uh, a great thing about Joomla is that it already has a good MVC architecture. So your models are already taking care of all your data access. Uh, however, using CSS frameworks needs a lot of knowledge of the Joomla templating system. Uh, and then we've had, we've had kind of uh, some training issues, people wanting to uh, work on a more, more modern stack. But at the same time, for the Joomla backend, we also had a lot of people who knew Joomla really well. And uh, I mean, we wanted to leverage their experience. We wanted to leverage all of the good work that they had done in the past, building Joomla models, building Joomla code. So then uh, the, the thought process there was to, could we actually use Joomla as a backend and uh, build a 
angular front end on top of it and uh, that's what we went there and did so uh, it's just fairly simple really it's uh, it's <clears throat> it looks something like this so the web front end could be uh, angular react we like to use angular a lot uh, it could also be a mobile app so you could you could have a native app or a hybrid app and then you build apis using com api so your front end talk to uh, the joomla through apis and joomla obviously works with with its own mysql database so it's it's as simple as that so how does it uh, how does it work i mean just just parts of the puzzle really so uh, here we use com api as uh, as a api framework to build all of our apis so com api has its own plugin structure that lets you create additional plugins for all your uh, custom components uh, we already have plugins built there for users content uh, most of the core joomla stuff and uh, it's very easy to build uh, plugins for your, for your own extensions uh, com api supports json output it supports xml output it also supports json p if you need it authentication is using uh, tokens and recently we are also adding recently we also added support for uh, jwt uh, and in some cases where where you are working on maybe let's say a legacy application where some of the features still are in joomla and only parts of it are uh, in angular we also have a uh, auto login plugin that lets you do like a single sign on between the angular application and the joomla application so even if you have some parts of the angular uh, some parts of the code still in joomla you can actually uh, do that and uh, another cool thing about com api is that it supports user impersonation which means that you can actually use uh, using a super admin token you can actually say that i want to do this particular or call this particular api on behalf of uh, some other user so this is typically for uh, performing admin tasks or kind of checking how uh, some things look like for a particular user without knowing that user's password so that's the that's the joomla api backend so like i said we have a bunch of apis already available uh, they are on the github i'll have links uh, in the presentation so we have joomla users uh, which also works with social login so uh, if you have jfb connect you can actually also integrate uh, social logins in the app or in the front end we have articles and categories we have a lot of easy social apis uh, we also have a product for easy social app that uh, you can use that's why all those apis are there same for easy blog we have apis for jrecording shika and then uh, the tj reports extension also has api so you can actually fetch the reports uh, via the apis uh, so why angular react so david mentioned a few minutes back i mean javascript world has been really amazing uh, it's basically a huge ecosystem of node modules a lot of things out there so you don't need to reinvent a ui there's plenty of uh, modules out there and javascript is something that uh, everybody wants to kind of get their hands dirty on uh, with node js with uh, javascript i think that's a language that can do both front end and back end and everybody wants to switch to that so this also gives uh, i mean this also has a hr angle for us which lets our lets our people kind of uh, work on the cool stuff uh, out there so we get to we get to work on uh, more modern stuff at the same time not kind of lose out on the knowledge we've gained on joomla so that's that's the angular or react story so yeah so the next bit is i'm going to just run you through a couple of case studies uh, a few websites that we've built using this uh, methodology so the first one is oceanama.com i'm just going to go out of the presentation and open that site Yeah, so these guys are uh, these guys are one of the largest auction houses in India. So they have a lot of uh, they have a lot of uh, film memorabilia. They have a lot of things uh, that they sell. So this entire site, so as you see, this Oceanama.com is actually a uh, Angular front end. Uh, you don't see Joomla anywhere. And I'm just going to open up the console here and show how things work. So if I navigate to a page. so this is all apis under the hood so there's an api it uh, has some data in it and the entire view is being built through data that is 
coming through an API. So if I keep on navigating, let's say I go to antiquities. Yeah, so again, you see a uh, bunch of APIs. And the interesting thing that we have done here is that we've actually used uh, a methodology that I talked about some time back, where uh, some of the data does come from a Joomla API. So this is an API. But a lot of the data also comes from something called as Algolia. Algolia is a, uh, it's a search index service that uh, you put your data into. So anytime records are edited into our, uh, into, into the backend, they also get indexed into Algolia. So uh, a lot of the data comes through Algolia, some of it comes through the Joomla API. So what you see over here is like the hybrid mashup of uh, some parts of Joomla API and some parts of uh, Algolia. If I move further, just pardon my internet. Yeah, so that's that's the that's the idea. So we have uh, we have a front end which is Angular, and we have a back end which is uh, API driven by Joomla. So going back to the presentation. Yeah. So uh, what we what we've done here is that uh, we have. I mean, the site initially of this uh, obviously started off with Joomla. We had uh, the front end also on Joomla. We had a template and all. But then at some point of time, we realized that uh, the front end needed to be something that's more slick, something that's more uh, quicker and more modern. So that's when we started off with this. We started building all the APIs. A lot of the work that was done was moved to uh, APIs. We had uh, we had Zoo. We had some custom components. Uh, we even moved a menus a lot of the menus to the uh, api that way some of the menus that we see in angular are coming off uh, are coming off uh, the joomla menus and we have like a small translation layer in between that converts the joomla menu aliases into uh, the routes that angular can handle so that's how this works and the next bit is that uh, we have uh, algolia like i said which uh, which has the other part of data that, that is indexed and data is in, uh, fitting to Algolia. So that's one case. I'm sorry, I can't show, uh, I'm not able to show this like uh, much longer. Uh, either something to do with my internet or something that uh, is not working there. So uh, as part of this, what we have, uh, what we have created is that we have a, a lot of the core Joomla API is already created. So we have articles where we can list articles, search articles, filter, read articles. Uh, it's all on the GitHub. We have users, uh, users. We have uh, a regular password login or a social login. And in fact, for users, what we have created is that we have created a Angular module that can be easily installed into uh, any Angular project, and it can uh, quickly, quickly connect to any Joomla uh, site that has API installed. And you can allow users to log in, log out, uh, sign up. Using the Zoom, using the Angular module, so uh, it's over here on the GitHub. I have the link there. So uh, some numbers in terms of this uh, project. Uh, so we have around 150,000 uh, records in Zoo, and we have uh, over uh, 500,000 relations between records. So because we have artwork, we have, because we have uh, different related areas. Uh, we have a lot of relations and then that actually is a pretty complex uh, thing to manage and then uh, it's been all fronted through the api and in terms of apis we have around 15 apis that have been created for menus for different zoo uh, details for some lists for menus all of that that's been uh, that's been the project so far uh, so the second case study for which uh, unfortunately i don't have a demo ready is uh, it's a vehicle tracking uh, project. So here, this was a this was a web front end as well as a mobile app, and we used uh, 
Joomla backend for all of this. So the idea here is that uh, it let it lets a fleet of truck owners create jobs for uh, create jobs for picking up a truck and moving it to point from point A to point B. And uh, the truck drivers themselves have an app where they receive a job notification. They can accept the job, uh, work on the job, and then uh, then complete the job. So there's two parts to it. There is a there's a front end, the web front end, which is Angular, and then there is a app front end, which is uh, a mobile app. And both of them connect to the Joomla backend, which is uh, through APIs. So like I said here, uh, we have an admin panel for agencies to manage jobs. And we have mobile app to, for drivers to accept jobs and uh, it's a driving companion. Uh, an interesting thing here is that we've integrated with uh, Sentience SDK for uh, driver quality monitoring. That's a separate topic altogether. Uh, there's some background services to calculate driving scores. So here we have close to 30 APIs with uh, full CRUD implementation for most entities. So uh, managing drivers, creating jobs, updating jobs, everything happens through uh, the app or the web front end. There's all APIs for that. So that that was a that was a short one. Uh, so I think uh, I I mean I'd like to make this more interactive. So if you have any questions. Uh, I'm all up for questions. Yeah, so while, while, while we are waiting for, for questions from the chat, if there any... Oh yeah, 10 seconds you said, right. Exactly, at least. Um, so a personal question. Um, if, if I have an existing web portal app thingy, which is based on Joomla, um, where do, do you have any decision making support metrics something like that uh, that could help me to make a decision if i should refactor this on joomla come api and the web front end or if i should just don't know switch the back end to something else which is also exposing apis so why why well, to summarize the question why building apis with joomla what why does this work for you that well why are you choosing that path yeah so this so one of the reasons to do this was uh, again to I mean uh, so like I said uh, the way the way you build API plugins is that if you already have a really good MVC extension created uh, and you have your models in place you pretty much have probably uh, 70 80 percent of the work cut for you and what you're doing when you're creating uh, API plugins is that instead of writing uh, typical MVC controllers you are just exposing these via an, uh, a different way uh, which is what Com API does for you, and it then takes care of all of the uh, authentication management and everything for you. So, uh, so if you want to, if you want to look at quickly moving an existing Joomla application to uh, kind of a decoupled front end, I think uh, that's one. That's one. And uh, the other reason is that uh, if you see, if you see that uh, you want to scale better. So let's say, uh, let's say you have an application and then. Uh, so we, in the past, what we've done is that we've actually run Joomla on multiple servers or so the same site. So for example, uh, on one of, in one of our sites, we run the site on eight servers. So uh, the images folder and all of the uploaded stuff is coming through a, uh, like a, a network storage and the code is replicated on eight different servers. So uh, that works well, but then uh, if you have an API, then that scaling becomes much more simpler because uh, you don't need to deal with things like uh, network storage, especially if you move all of your storage to S3. So uh, for us, I think it definitely works much better uh, in a scaling scenario. That's definitely one of the reasons. And then, uh, so the other thing, like I said, is uh, it's it's not too hard to actually uh, move your existing models to a Com API plugin. In fact, uh, I'm just going to show you quickly how we do that. Yeah, so this is one of the uh, plugins we have there. So this is the users plugin. And if you see here, 
this is the plugin that I, this is the code that actually has all the uh, actual methods. So if if you want to implement, let's say, uh, an API with the URL, uh, your Joomla site slash users slash users, all you have to do is just write uh, methods that map to your HTTP works that you want to support. So if you want to support a delete, delete method, just write a delete uh, method here. And uh, the code inside is pretty much as you would do your regular Joomla code. <clears throat> you can just use your existing models and uh, get done with it. Okay. So we just use, use a save all of the Joomla stuff that you're familiar with. It's just that it maps to uh, these get post, uh, all these methods. Okay. Yeah, seems as, to as, as yeah. did, did, did you guys have a chance to look into what George is doing for Joomla 4 with the uh, native Joomla core API? Uh, yeah, yeah. The... I, I briefly did. Yeah. In fact, I've tried out some of the APIs and I think that Implementation implementation looks uh, pretty good. Nice. Uh, so when Joomla four is out, yeah, I'm actually uh, looking forward to moving a lot of this to that. Okay. Okay. So and um, if if I as a Joomla developer, um, mainly doing PHP stuff so far, um, if I now want to jump into into heavy JS uh, savvy frameworks, um, do you have an advice for me where to start? Um, what's and an address documentation, anything where 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 you would point me to? Because in in in, in my perception, a lot of Joomla developers, especially when they're more when they're coming more from the backend side, JS is kind of scary to them, right? It's still that jQuery driven thingy which yeah. works badly in in Internet Absolutely. Explorer and which is callback hell. Um, and yeah. <laughs> right, that's uh, a lot of stuff has changed. But where to start? uh i think it's it's not that hard really i mean uh, so i would i would definitely recommend looking at angular or react and i think uh, which one to pick is really what i've seen is, is a personal choice and uh, i think there's plenty of good angular tutorials out there i think the only thing that uh, the only thing coming from a joomla uh, or a php uh, background to a, a js background uh, yeah, callback here is one thing that you said. The asynchronous nature of JavaScript makes it a little tough to uh, grasp initially. But then I think once you have a hang of it, uh, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, I would I mean I would really recommend uh, some of the good Angular tutorials on maybe Udemy. I think uh, they are definitely good to start with. Yeah, in, and in, yeah, in... I mean if you need help, feel free to reach out to me also. I'd awesome. be happy to help. <laughs> Then my, my, my personal addition to that list, um, if you're uh, if you have played mainly with jQuery in the past and uh, callback hell is scaring you, um, take take half a day off and read into uh, read yourself into ECMAScript uh, six, so the the modern yeah. version of JavaScript. Um, there's a lot of awesome sauce happening there. Stuff to avoid callback hell promises as in await awesome stuff which is going to blow your mind if you ever uh, have been stuck in call by cow um it's a game changer and it's it's making our way our, our life so much easier as developers so take take a couple of hours to get into that um it's it's mind-blowing and it's going to open your eyes yeah absolutely i would definitely second that that's the way to go and that's the reason i called it the uh, the way you take joomla to the next decade with Content like this, uh, we definitely put ten more years uh, on Joomla. I would say. Yeah, agreed. Okay, so no more additional questions from the chat. Just uh, Daniel asking you to please share that link to your presentation, um, and yeah, probably in the chat and also on Twitter. And if yeah, you also that. send me the link, um, I'll also make sure that it's going to end up in the description of the uh, of the YouTube recording. Okay, yep, thank you, Ashwin. Do that. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody, for listening in. It uh, was a pleasure having you. Um, for the rest of you guys hanging out here, uh, we're now having a 30-minute break, uh, which uh, gives the team here the chance to grab something to eat. Uh, and then we'll be right back at... Yeah, that was um, the idea. <laughs> uh, then we'll be right back at uh, 12...
at noon UTC, uh, so in roughly 30 minutes. Um, again, with uh, Mark uh, showing us the magic of custom fields and overrides. Um, yeah, so see you around later. Yep, thank you.